was 65 degrees yesterday. <laughs> 65. The low tonight is 8. Can we get down to 8? It was 65 yesterday. Tonight, 8. And lots of ice. And it looks like snow. It's mostly ice. Still pretty. Not as pretty as snow. Said maybe an inch. If even, it's mostly the rain. I mean, we got a lot of rain overnight and it's just, you don't need the weather forecast. Mostly just updating because I had mentioned having to get the plants, not having to, but wanting to get some of the plants outside last week, but waiting for it to warm up because it was supposed to be really warm this week. And then instead this week it's, well, it was, it was like 63, 64, 65. It was beautiful. But then this one day where it's going to be in the single digits at nighttime means I couldn't move the plants out, which is fine. By plants, I'm talking about the more cold hardy palms that one day got in the way. I moved a few of them out though, just to give them some exposure to the wind and the elements. I need to move those in tonight before it gets too much colder. It's like 29 right now. I have been getting some stuff done in the garage. Just go out there and look at those plants. Ah, oh, the snow, it's so pretty. I don't think they appreciate it though. They can handle some snow, but I think that this is enough though. Spent a little while pulling some plants out from back here. I talked about in the last video about how there's basically like a traffic jam and I need to scoot some things out and move some. That's why those are outside. Just need to make some room to walk around and, and it's good to let them have some fresh air, right? I mean, they've been sitting in here in the garage for a few weeks now. It's good for them to have some airflow. And I think they probably enjoyed the few days of 60 degree temperatures. And then now the snow, it's good for them. Keeps them sturdy. Need a little bit of adversity, right? Don't want them to go soft. Now I just have to hope they're not frozen to the, oh no. No, they're frozen to the ground. Just drag these in, slightly frozen. So I mean, I'm gonna use two hands for this. That was an interesting experience since they were frozen to the ground. So it had to be forceful to get them off of the driveway, but also had to be very gentle because they're frozen. They can break very, very, very easily. They're okay though. They don't look great right now. That's just because the snow has them weighed down in the morning those should pop back up pardon the background noise the heater I, I can't turn it off right now it's like 14 degrees outside and i just had these doors open so i couldn't turn the heater off but i'm gonna let things warm back up in here and then can pick up i have a few things i want to do over there with some of the plants okay that's better a little hazy in here got the humidifier running because the air outside was very dry heaters finally shut off got things warmed back up in here. I had to have both the doors open for a little while and that's you know, not great to do. It's 23 degrees outside. It wasn't for very long and that's also why I keep the plants that are more cold hardy down there and the most tropical plants closest to the house. I know you wouldn't think it'd make that much of a difference, right? But it does. It makes a slight difference. They're moved back in and I just looked at the forecast. It's already changed. It was supposed to get down to eight or nine degrees tonight. Pretty sure I mentioned and they changed it to 14. So technically I probably could have left those outside and they would have been fine because after today, like it's just a one-off, just one day really bad. And then it's supposed to be like in the forties with lows in the twenties, which the windmill palms are totally fine with. Would have been fine out there for at least another 10 days, according to the forecast, but it's just this one, just one night. Maybe I didn't even need to bring them in. Sad I noticed that change in the forecast, like just 15 minutes ago, maybe I wouldn't have moved those in. I don't know. That's sort of a toss up, right? Because you can leave them outside 14 degrees with snow and ice kind of risky especially if they're wrong about the temperature you know if they're wrong it gets colder than that that could be a problem the windmill pumps can go pretty cold but those are in pots so they're not as protected they don't have as much insulation on them so there's the risk of all those things wrong forecasts and ice and whatnot but then there's also the risk of moving them around when they're frozen because the, you damage a lot of plant tissue that way oh what's done is done not a big deal. They've been moved around when they've been frozen plenty of times over the years. So I'm not too concerned about them. Picking up from where I left off last week, now a few minutes into the vlog, I did some repots. If you saw that vlog, if you didn't see that vlog last Saturday, I did some repots and there were some centipedes and some icky things. And I was like, eh, I don't really want to do that in here. Just dirt everywhere. So I did end up doing some repots. Didn't film it because it was just really quick. I learned last week that I don't really enjoy repotting plants on camera all that much. It just really slows the process down. And don't get me wrong, still gonna be doing some repots here on the channel. In fact, right now I have some plants that need to be, I'm sorry, repotted, up potted. I guess that's the same difference. I did repot one of the stromanthes back here into this, I believe, eight inch container. Gave it a clean up. It had some crispy leaves. There's some snail damage on there from when this was outside during the summertime. 
and it looks as if the plant has decided it wants to go to sleep, so I'm not going to mess with it any more than that, but that was just in one of these little six inch containers like this one right here. So I need to repot this one next, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm gonna wait. My first priority of things that need to be moved into different pots right now is definitely these calatheas. These were from that Hertz haul, the video prior to this one, all those fun plants that came in the mail. These are rooted into their pots, into their containers very well. I've been having to water these very frequently. You can see the little bit of crispiness there too. They're just drying out really fast. Uh, uh oh, oops. I'll get that out later. I've gotten some self-watering containers to put these calatheas in. They're just so, so, so much easier to grow when they're in a self what uh oh. Ah, forgot about those. What are you guys doing out of your pot? Go back to your pot. Family friendly content. Come on now, naked hot dogs, don't think so. Anyways, these three need to be repotted. I've also got these baskets here. Aren't these fun? Well, you probably, you don't understand why I think they're fun. For a long time, like a few years, I've wanted to get some of those rail baskets that you put along the, like up well, on the side of a fence or deck box baskets that you just like put over the side of your fence. But I've only ever been able to find the ones that were straight, like to go across the top of a two by four, or, you know, top of a railing. But these were made for the, the what, chain link fences. You know, the ones that have a bar on them so I can take these. They fit right over this PVC perfectly. Look at that. I can take plants and set them in just like that and put some uh, self wicking cord in the bottom. Let that run down to the water for the really thirsty plants. This would be a great place to keep them. And then that frees up space on the table. Space for what? I don't know because the Monstera shades everything. So it's really not an ideal place to keep most plants, but still more space is more space. You can have some fun with that. This needs to be cleaned up first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Set those over there for right now. First thing I need to do is get these moved into these self-watering containers. Just pretty cheap ones I got off of Amazon. Nothing fancy here. I'm weird with self-watering containers, mostly in the sense that I, I don't trust most of them. So when I see the ones that have the little clear base on them, which I know not as attractive, come on, come on plastic. This, a clear base. I'm gonna set one up so you can see what I'm talking about. There. Like this. I like to be able to see the reservoir and know how much water is actually in there, particularly for plants that are being grown off in soil instead of like pond or like a clay pebbles, whatever it is you're using, gravel. With soil, I like to be able to see what's going on down there just because things can very easily end up being way too moist up top in the container for the ones that, well, like this one over here, where you can't really see the basin. It has the thing in the back, the little bobber to let you know if there's too much water in there or just if there's any water in there period still this is my preference that is attractive but as far as function goes my preference sometimes you get algae buildup and some nasty stuff down there but i don't care about that i'm not really going for aesthetics out here in the gross space these are pretty cheap too i think it's like 18.99 or 12.99 for a three pack of these and it was pretty simple very simple to put together just run the wicking cord that it came with right through those holes just like that and then this just snaps right on top of there just like that, and there's a little hole there too if you want to directly put water down into this basin instead of watering from the top. Have that option, which is nice. I'll probably water from the top, maybe a little bit from the bottom. I don't know, we'll see. Normally when I'm using a wicking cord, I like for it to run up into the soil more than this. So it's possible that after, you know, maybe just a week or two of trying this out, I may end up not being totally crazy about it. Although really, to be fair, these things, when the plant's not established, they're not necessarily as effective anyway, so probably going to need to give them longer than that to see if I like them. Those are all ready to be put together. Sorry about the sound of the crinkling plastic there. The wicking cord's just more simplistic, more my speed, especially if it's just for a temporary application like with these. Once these are outside, I'm not going to be concerned about these being in self-watering containers. There is plenty of moisture outside during the summer, and even when there's not, if we have a dry spell, doesn't matter, I have the drip irrigation out there. Calatheas always do just fine outside. Yeah. Actually, I should pop these up before I snap those into the bases, shouldn't I? These things are just going to get filled up with soil. If I pop them up with those on them, probably water them in before I put them on those too, shouldn't I? I got these filled up with some soil and stupidly stacked them, so now there's dirt on the wicking cord, which I don't care. That doesn't matter. Really, not a big deal. Hey, these have some nice looking roots on them. Got some 
nice healthy structures forming down there. It's fantastic. Love to see that. Not doing anything with the roots. The, that plant was not at all pot bound. So it, just the little bit of movement from pulling out of the pot should have been enough for it. This one also, not a ton going on down there. Give it a little tickle, but that's about it. Theano Calatheas, they are divas. If you mess with those roots too much, they will throw an absolute fit. You do not like those roots messed with, so I'm not going to if I don't have to. And that's not true for all Calatheas, but particularly these two, the White Star especially, Diva Calathea. The Fusion, I actually don't know. The Yellow Fusion, I haven't grown. I've grown the White Fusion, and it was kind of a tricky plant, sort of. I mean, tricky in the sense where it just wasn't forgiving. So really had to stay on top of the hydration. It's going to be the same thing over here with the White Star. But there are Calatheas that are more sturdy, like the Ornata or the Pink Stripe. It tends to be more tough. The Mosaic or Network, you know, the one, the trending tropical one from Costa Farms. Those tend to be very sturdy as well. I'm going to go ahead and get these filled up, get them watered in. One down, two to go. All right. One more. All right, and then since I didn't think ahead and just pre-moisten some soil, I'm going to have to water these in very heavily. I'm putting them in here to help contain some of that water. This little tub that should help contain some of that water. Give these a nice big drink. Make sure that soil is moistened all the way through and get all the bubbles out. There's something so satisfying about the first watering, right? When you see the soil rise and then fall down and they're just like, you know you've done something, you know the plant's hopefully about to appreciate it. Signifies having finished something up, gotten a project done. That's always a nice feeling, right? Especially when you have a lot of plants, like there's so many occasions where we know there's something that we really need to do, need to get on top of, other things happen and get in the way. Finally get it done and it's such a feeling of relief. And there's not much to this. Not going to go overboard here and be like, oh, I feel so accomplished. Doing this only takes a couple of minutes. Just feels nice to have it done. I'm going to let these soak for a while and all that nice gooey nasty water that's down there. I shouldn't say that. It's not nasty. That's going to confuse people. That's just runoff from the potting soil. It's got good stuff in it. Tannins and compost. This was, uh, it's just a spoma potting mix. Been using it for, well, heliconias. Have really appreciated it. Calatheas, gingers, heliconias. They should all do just fine with that mix. It drains well, holds on to some moisture, and it is very organically rich. When I get them moved outside, I will, I'll add some more uh, compost. Probably some land and sea compost, earthworm castings, all kinds of stuff in there. Calatheas like that soil, nice and rich. All right, and now, the last thing I wanna do before I call it quits. You saw it was getting dark out there, right? I'm not ready for bed, but I need to go inside, hang out with the pets, do some other things, but there are a few things, mostly just these two things I wanted to get done tonight and that was to grab this stromanthe here and do I want to put a wicking I guess I should hold on all right that's the best lighting my apologies I'm running out of space to do some things over here this is wicking cord in here just cotton rope nothing fancy get this stuff pretty cheap off of Amazon I'm going to cut just a couple of these for right now just for the stromanthes where are my scissors and uh, that's probably going to be it. I don't know if I want to put the other plants that are going to go in those containers on self-licking cord. I need some sharper scissors. This is already fairly moist. I'm standing right in front of my lights. With the wicking stuff, you know, it's best to make sure that the potting mix has been moistened all of the way. Where's my other cord? I have a chopstick here. Hopefully this is in focus. Don't know, it's too many lights, can't see my viewfinder. You can see what I'm doing here is I'm just putting that cord around the tip of the chopstick, pull it nice and tight, hold it in my hand, kind of like this, help hold the pressure down on the rope and hold the chopstick still. Am I being too specific? Maybe I am. Then I go in and stab that up in there as far as I can and let go. Just like that. I go in and do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Super easy. Then that cord goes right down there into the water pot can sit in here. That is now self-watered. It's a stromanthe though. I'm still going to have to water it from the top. It's really just more of a backup to make sure that there's always some moisture that the plant can access in case I just forget to water. Put that one over there. I'm not going to put a wicking cord on the other one right now. There's no point since I need to repot that one. It doesn't seem like it would make a huge difference in the others. I'm just going to drop in these kangaroo paw ferns. Tonight I'll think about whether or not I want to put the wicking cord onto these kangaroo paw ferns. Maybe I may as well. I don't know. I had cut the pieces for it, but I just, 
Uh, I want to think about it because I'm also trying to decide if I want to repot those right now or if I want to wait because they need to be divided up. I just don't know if that's something I want to do at this exact time. I think I'd rather hold off on that until it's warm outside and I think they'll take root better. Plenty warm in here, plenty of humidity. You know, things just tend to do better outside. It's so much more effortless. Glad that's done. I'm going to hold off on adding water to the reservoirs until the morning because that soil's already saturated enough. They don't need it right now. If anything, it would probably benefit them to let some of that water seep out and get out of that pot. And I can't keep these on the desk. It's in direct path of the heater. They'll just fry and cook. I don't think it would go well. Okay, gonna go do some things in the house and uh, decide on what I want for those kangaroo puff urns tonight. Pick up in the morning. I, when I, I don't know why I even bother telling you when I edit this, nobody would know a difference. It doesn't matter. Although it is good to warn since sometimes things pick back up in a very random way that doesn't make any sense with what was going on prior. I imagine that's probably what's about to happen in the clip after this one. Good morning, Turpo. It's such a beautiful day, isn't it? Okay. There you go. Go have fun. I think he's looking for his friend. I don't think he's up there right now. I'm sorry, baby. And sitting here at the window staring up at the hill, that's where his, his friend, his neighbor friend, sits right up here. Right there. It stares down and barks to let Turbo know when he's outside and wants to play. It is way too cold out there. It has warmed up quite a bit, though. Cut down like 12, I think, last night, so... The 22 that it is right now is a slight improvement. It's gonna warm up more. The sable palms, I didn't cover them up because, well, they've taken much colder than 12 degrees, but oh, they're not looking very good. Maybe it was too much precipitation mixed in with that cold, you know, ice. I didn't realize it was going to be that much wet before it got cold. Thought it was gonna be like fluffy snow, so. Oops, they should be okay. We'll see, I'm gonna have to give it some time. When it warms up, hit him with some fungicide if need be and nurse him back to life. What is he doing? What is he doing? <laughs> He's a character. Don't know what that was about. I just looked over out of the corner of my eye and I was like, um, Turbo, you okay, baby? He's a weird one and he pumpkin. Where are you going? Hi, sweetie. Hi, pumpkin. She was on something last night. I don't know what her deal was. She barely let me sleep. This cat was bouncing all over the place. Oh, do I hear a Toby? There's Toby. Hey, baby Toby. Come on, Toby. Sweetheart, Toby. You need to go outdoors? Do you need to go outdoors? You want to go outdoors, Toby? Come on, Toby. Let's go outdoors. Oh, boy, Toby. You don't need... All right, no. He was just tricking me. He just wants a treat. Here you go. Good boy. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Get out of there. You know better. Yeah, Turbo. I don't know if it showed on camera, he had one paw in the garden bed and he was looking up through the window. He's like, oh, uh oh, he sees me. That's right, I saw you, Turbo. Sit down. There you go. Good babies, good doggies. All right, get outside. Some work to do out there. A few little things I wanna do. A lot of them involve repotting and I'm almost out of soil. Well, I have more soil, but it's out there. Frozen solid, I'm not gonna be able to use that anytime soon. Well, maybe I could use it tomorrow, but that's irrelevant because the vlog comes out tomorrow. You're, you don't need to go back. You were just out there. I don't think so. You're not tricking me. It's not happening. You were just out there. In and out, in and out. All that dog wants to do is go in and out. It's because he knows that when he goes out and comes back in, he gets a treat. All about getting treats. You don't need to... Ugh, fine. This is where things get complicated with the trainings. Like, we have a deal. If he rings the bells, I let him out. Yeah. Oh, okay, Toby, you, now you want to go out? He was acting like he needed to go out, and then he didn't. And now he, I think you saw it. All right, well, it's too cold to leave them out there unsupervised. So I'm going to let them play around for a while and then go out to the grow space. Unsupervised. What I mean is, I don't want to go out there and forget that they're out there. It's too cold. Need to be able to let them in as soon as they come back to the door. Okay, time to get back to work. I've <laughs> got the elephant out of the pond. Pond, basin. What are we calling that? There's no fish in it anymore. It's just water. Then gathering more plants that need some repots and ones that need some TLC that were black. This one got left out in the cold last November, October ish. That's why all this damage in here, but it's bouncing back. Can clean it up. I was watching a live stream here. Views on the road. Great YouTube channel. That's Steph and her sister Cloud. They're fantastic. Check them out. Always fun to listen to the live streams. Hope prepping some stuff up for the videos. Also, found my cactus, which y'all didn't know that I lost it, but I did. And look at it, it's so tiny. 
easy to lose. I need to repot it. That's so sad. I'm gonna get that bumped up into... <laughs> well, I, I think it'll stay in that container, but <laughs> could use some soil. That'd be a good place to start. I think the first thing I should do though while I'm out here is get this Stromanthe cleaned up. Poor thing. Look at it. So sad looking. Oh, that looks so much worse when the lights are on. Well, not really worse, just more real. You can see what's happening there now. I am apprehensive to dive into this because of the centipede last week. Another self-watering container. This is just one of the ones that I think a Sansevieria came in from the Home Depot last year, which but Sansevieria's, why? Are, why? It seems like in all of the ads and every time I'm shopping or just browsing on Amazon and there's self-watering containers, there always seems to be a snake plant, a Sansevieria in them. And it's like, that's like the worst plant to put in a self-watering container. They don't need it. It's totally unnecessary. Of all the plants, why that one? Why not like a spider plant? Spider plants, they would do wonderfully in a self-watering container or a fern or a calathea. Stromanthe is something fun and colorful. That'll grab people's eye if you want them to look at the ads. Oh, there's spider webs in here. Sometimes with rhizomatic plant, okay, wow, <laughs> this side really got hit by that frost. What I was saying is sometimes with rhizomatic plants, ones that spread very quickly and easily, sometimes if they're just a huge mess, then I'll go through and just cut the entire thing back, which would have been the smarter thing to do a couple of months ago, like right when the damage happened. I did go in and cut some stuff out. Clearly not enough of it. That's better. Huge improvement, right? Uh, that's what we gotta do sometimes. Sometimes just need to get in and give them a really heavy prone, help them reset. Look at those roots. Plants certainly enjoyed being in the self-watering container. I bet I'm probably going to have to cut this out. That's rock solid in there. I should use a box cutter, but I don't feel like getting one. I don't know if cutting through the plastic's bad for the clippers or not. Get the other side and this should just peel right off. Yeah, woohoo. There we go. <laughs> now there is a plant that needs a repot. Holy cow, look at that. I'd say this is going to be much happier in a larger pot. In fact, actually this would be a good plant to uh, take a knife to this. I could probably cut this into thirds and divide it up. This just isn't the time of year. I really don't want to divide plants right now, which I kind of talked about with the, uh, uh, what was it, the kangaroo paw ferns. Sort of started to touch on that yesterday. It's so much easier to do it outdoors when it's nice and humid outside. The drip can hit them. I, there's so much to keep up with in here as far as watering goes. Space is another factor. If I divide that up and that's three more things I have to make space for, though I guess it'll break even with roughly what I'm doing with potting it up into a larger container, huh? Eh, nah, I don't want to do it right now. I'd rather wait until sometime, probably mid to late May. We get so much precipitation in May and June, well, most of the summer, but May and June. Really, there's so much moisture outside that it's just easier to just divide them up, put them in their pots, set them outside, and let nature handle the rest. I'm going through and just lightly loosening up the roots with the edge of my, you can see what I'm doing. Anything where it's like rock hard, just loosening that up so that the roots can escape and they won't be stuck in place. Good to loosen them up so they can grow out, fan out and not keep wrapping around themselves. Oh, I made a big mess on the desk. One down and one to go. I just set that right inside the thing without, that's not a good idea. Not where I should have that set. There we go. Now, this one from last night or a few minutes ago. Ho ho, there are some ants in this one. Is it gonna focus? There they are, lots of ants. I'm going to go ahead and just hit this whole thing with an insecticidal soap just to make things more tacky so they can't scatter about and move around, move on to a new pot too terribly easily. That is so weird, ants set up shop so fast. Y'all saw me messing with this earlier. I was holding it, moving around. I didn't see any ants on it. They moved in overnight. I've been doing a lot of ant control around here with some of the other plants. I think that they've been like, hopping from container to container. You ready for this? This is probably gonna be intense. Actually, not that many in there. Plenty of them on the root ball, but still not as much as I had thought there would be. Same thing here. Go in and clean up the dead foliage and just pop this into its new container. And then I'm going to put some ant traps, some ant bait 
in the container, that should help take care of that problem. There's sprays and like different types of granules you can use for the ants. All of them are poisonous, so I prefer to not use them. They're fairly harsh, not things I want over the water back here, back behind this where I'm going to have this sitting. And the Stromanthes flower probably won't be flowering for the next few months, but they're moving on to their second year of growth. So I would expect flowers on these this summer. So I don't really want chemicals to have been down there around the roots just for the sake of the pollinators. Now I didn't intentionally set out with this video to be all about repotting different types of Calathea. Had I thought that through this probably would have been better to have done as like an actual like weekday video where it's a little bit shorter and more to the point talking about Calatheas and how I like to grow them in some different varieties and when to divide them all those things. It just so happened that the majority of the plants that I needed to work with this week that were Next up on my list were all different types of Calathea and I just gotten all those other new ones. One thing that I should point out, cause I was talking about dividing a moment ago is that I uh, gauge when it's time to divide these one by, well, if the growth is stalled and the pot's really tight, that means it's a good time to either repot or divide. But when the middle starts to get really bare in there like this, that's when it's time to go ahead and divide these up. So this one, I would probably take a cutting right around here and then probably another right there or just cut the entire thing in half would probably be a good you know i actually might need to do that with this one because chances are not much is going to end up happening here in the middle uh, i just said i don't feel like dividing plants right now okay went inside grabbed a knife this really does need a division you see with this one right here it's not completely bare on the inside there's still growths in the middle that are actively growing they're still green they're going to keep coming up and doing something whereas with this one over here that bare spot in the middle the concern that you start to have with plants like this when they get bare like that is that the inner part that rhizome that's down there that was part of the plant that was in the center that's going to start to decay and rot it's not a great idea to have things decaying and rotting in our pots so this is something that also just happens naturally with the calatheas heliconias Bananas will do this. Any type of plant that is monocarpic. These are plants that typically only produce one flower. So they'll put a flower up from their growth here in the middle. And then once that flower is done, then that entire growth will die off. And that's why sometimes things end up getting bare in the middle of these containers and why they need to be cut up. I'm just going to cut this straight down the middle and do two divisions with it because I really don't need three of them having one more is plenty don't need any more than that use a nice clean sharp knife to make those cuts if you have more patience than i do or maybe you're just more cautious in general it's not a terrible idea to go ahead take your fingers or a chopstick some something get in there and loosen up all the soil and free the rhizomes that the plants are on instead of cutting through them because anytime a unnecessary cut is made inside of a plant that's when you start worrying about different infections and pests and things getting into those rhizomes but this plant has some nice big chunky healthy rhizomes on it so i'm not too concerned about that hit them with some peroxide because of the ants that will help if there's any larvae or any stragglers in there and to help clean up the edges of those rhizomes where they were cut and just let that sit for a moment give it a rinse and pop these up i figured it'd be a good idea to swap what i was doing with the container so the first one that I did all the pruning on that I didn't divide. I'm moving up to this larger container and then the two smaller divisions I have in these more shallow pots. You know, they're plants that have shallow roots and I figure to avoid any risk of rot to make sure to give them a nice shallow container. So not too much moisture can sit underneath those roots. And this is nice and wide. So they have space to go ahead and fill out inside of these pots. Fill this in, give them a heavy drink. And I am done with repotting Stromanthes and Calatheas today. I don't think I'm going to be able to fit all three of these in here to get them watered in. Nope, definitely not. That's okay, let's do two at a time. I don't want to forget to adjust the plant because that's going to want to move around in there as well as that soil settles. Go. Last one. So satisfying. The more peace of mind to add to the list, having these plants repotted, knowing that that's something I don't have to worry about for a while, not for another year probably. At least not with these three. They should be okay like this for a pretty long time. All right, so I've got my ant baits, some more of that water wicking cord. Get these plants put up over the water. I saved the little pieces. 
that come with the plants at Lowe's, the self-watering ones, because you can stick them into the bottom of the containers. It's very nifty. The reason to get rid of those, Let's see if these cut through that any easier. Yes, they do. I think with this group right here, I'm going to do three in each container instead of the two like I did with the one prior because it's a slightly larger upgrade to the containers. I want to make sure that the moisture's nice and even around everything. <laughs> Punching my camera now. I don't know why. Just go inside and grab some scissors. Ah, oh, completely forgot I have scissors that are magnetized that stick right to the side of this desk and I never use them because I forget about them. I think these are kitchen scissors, but it works. Aren't these cute? It's a toucan, I think. Does it go like this? Yeah, I think that's how it goes. Toucan inspired. Does that cut through any easier? No, not at all. These are serrated. These are meant for cutting up food in the kitchen. That's the last piece. Nine more pieces cut up and ready to put into those containers. Just backing up just a little bit, I do think I probably should emphasize what I was saying earlier about the way I divided these with the knife. That really isn't how I would typically do things for Calatheas. The Stromanthes, these trio stars, they tend to have a thicker rhizome on them and they tend to be more sturdy as far as the Calatheas are concerned. But if this were pretty much any other type of Calathea, I would go through and very delicately remove all of the soil from around those rhizomes and just cut out the bad ones and make clean cuts where they need to be separated. Just sawing them in half, that's pretty aggressive for most Calatheas. I don't think that's how I would do things for the majority of them. Like I said, the Stromanthes, they tend to be more tough. I don't worry about them as much, but like the ones I was potting up yesterday, the, the yellow fusion, the white peacock, heck no, no way. I would be much more delicate with how I go about things with those. Let me know if y'all would be interested in me cutting this video up and re-editing it and doing a video that's like just Calatheas. It wouldn't be difficult to do. I would wait several weeks so that there could be some progress on these to finish off a video like that with. Something without all the dogs and palm tree stuff and just the randomness that is within the vlog. I did not intend for this video to be so heavy on one topic. Typically these weekend videos are all over the place with lots of different things. It just so happened to be that this is what I needed to do this week. So that's how it all worked out. It's not normal for me to like be stuck on one topic with one type of plant for an entire vlog. You know, these videos are usually just a video diary of what's going on during the week, and they get pretty random sometimes. But this is more focused, I guess you would say. I'm saying focus is being somewhat generous. I don't like how this container is draining. When I have pots that hold on to some water, like look at that. You see that? All that water should be out of there by now. So in between these holes right here, I'm going to take my clippers and just get in there and make another cut like this. That's going to allow more water to flow out. You know, the Calatheas love their water, but drainage is still very important. That was the other thing I forgot to mention with the wicking cord is if you're going and plugging up all those holes, sometimes that can interfere with the drainage. But it doesn't hurt to go in and put in some more holes just to help things out. So this is what I use for the ants, the liquid ant bait stuff. These are very nifty. I've shown them before and how I use them. Sometimes those twisty things don't come off. These just stick right down into the soil. I like to make sure that this hole that's in there is facing away from the direction where I usually am when I'm watering so that the stuff that's inside there doesn't get flushed out. All right, can finally go ahead and get these put away over here. You can't even see what's going on. The kangaroo paw ferns, those are gonna have to go. Those can't stay there, can they? Uh, these are gonna have to go. Not room for those. That's fine. They were doing okay where they were. And if I like how this is working out, I can always order some more of those little fence pot hanger doodads. I could add some more. I don't know. I think that there might be too much airflow right here from the fans for that, so maybe I should, hmm. I was gonna say I could try and move them around. How's that leaf looking? Right in the lens. Aren't they beautiful? Love the trio stars. So work that down in there. That was a perfect fit. That size pot goes excellent inside of those containers. Oh, those fun strings. This is exactly what I wanted. I was hoping to just have a nice, fun, pretty wall of trio stars right along the edge of the pot there. I accidentally turned my stabilizer off. I think I did. Is that better? A little bit. I'm going to keep the other Calatheas that did at the beginning of the video back there for right now. It's a little bit more removed from the air movement. There's a lot of airflow over here. Even these. I think that this should be okay, but with the heater being just right up here, 
right there. It took longer to get to than I thought it would. It blows down like right around here. So there's gonna be a lot of air movement, warm air movement there. So I'm going to have to keep an eye on these. They may not like the spots. This might not work out. Just have to wait and see. I can't adjust the heater. It's like the instructions say not to. Basically you can adjust it at two angles and that's it. So uh, I'll just have to play around with things and hope that it goes okay. Humidity's pretty good over here, especially when the little vaporizer thingy's going, get all that extra fog up there. And when there's more water in the pond, obviously, that's going to make a really big difference too. They should enjoy it, but like I said, I don't know, air movement might be a bit much. Have to wait and see. Really looking forward to watching things progress over here or maybe just sitting back and Maybe seeing them get scorched and leaf burnt from all the airflow right by them. If that does end up being a problem, I should be able to just pick them up and set them back there on the table because I already had two of them on the table as it was and they were doing fine. I didn't seem to mind the airflow at that distance, but right here it might be a bit much. I can always just scoot them if that becomes a problem. Well, I'm gonna have to think hard about how I title this video, aren't I? I don't wanna title it repotting and dividing calatheas. That'd be a bad idea. Can you imagine if you were trying to find a video that was just like a how-to or a care video and then it was like palm trees, dogs, cats, birds. Do some repotting, move on to another subject, come back. Oh, no. I don't, I don't think that would be great. That's why I was saying it might be a good idea for me to give it a few weeks, let these plants progress. So there can be a before and after and maybe do something that's like more structured and easier to follow for people who are like wanting the information. This, you know, Saturday vlogs, we're just hanging out here. It just happened to be all with the same type of plant. I tried to mix it up, didn't quite get there this week. So thanks for hanging out. There were a few other things I wanted to do in this video, but again, with things already being so on one topic-ish, I don't wanna mess it up even more because it's already gonna be hard enough to title the video as it is. A little bit of action coming out from the Gloriosum. That's good, that's a good sign. That makes me happy. And you know, next week, Saturday's vlog next week, I'm probably gonna pick up from right here. I have two more plants that need some TLC, that need some looking after. And then I don't know if I'm going to do this next week, but it would be fun to go to a nursery. I miss the nurseries, the smells of the plants. Not necessarily to even buy plants, just I just want to be around them. I mean, I'm around a lot of plants right now. You know what I mean? It's different when you get out of the house and you're around the plants that are for sale and you see the opportunities and you can smell them and everybody's so happy. Hopefully they should be. Why wouldn't you be surrounded by plants? Get it together, be happy. It's that psychology degree coming into play there. Wouldn't I have been a great therapist? What's your problem? Just be happy, shut up. Yeah, no, if only things were that easy, right? Thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Oh, they're so pretty. Look at that leaf that's coming out from there. I also forgot to mention one of these plants was a gift from Pam. Pammy's plenty things and I, I don't remember which one it is. I'm sorry, Pam. I think it was the one that I divided up. Maybe. No, it was the one that was in the self-watering container because that was originally outside floating around in the outdoor pond thing and then the frost got it because I forgot it was down in the water level, got low, so I couldn't see it. And then it, I moved it in here to the... Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. Spring's almost here. Just almost a month away from when this video comes out. Won't be much longer. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.